everyone, this is Abby from the Springs Preserve. I know spring break camp didn't go as planned this year, but we still wanna make sure you can enjoy some Springs Preserve uh, quality time at home. Um, we are doing our sensational spring break camp. Um, in today's sense, we're gonna be learning all about sound. Um, sound, you know, we listen with our ears and it's measured in a couple different ways. Um, you can measure the pitch, which is how high something is, like a mouse's squeak, or how low something is, like a lion's roar um, is really low. Um, you also measure sound and how loud it is. Um, and we measure that using something called decibels. Now decibels, um, when humans talk, we usually talk about 60 decibels. Um, that's how loud our talking voice is. And safely, um, we can listen to about 85 decibels without doing any damage to our ear. However, there are some sounds that are really loud. Um, things like a baby's cry is about 110 decibels. Um, a cicada, which is those buzzing uh, insects in the trees in the summertime here in Las Vegas, they usually go about 120 decibels. And then a firework is about 145 decibels. So hearing those once in a while isn't gonna do damage, but if you listen to it uh, too close or for too long of a time, it can do a little bit of damage to those ears. Um, we're gonna be talking about the loudest sound ever recorded by humans. Um, that means that there's a record of it um, being very, very loud. And that is a, a noise that we call Krakatoa. Now Krakatoa is K-R-A-K-A-T-O-A. -A -A. And Krakatoa was an island in Indonesia, which is in Southeast Asia, if you guys don't know where that is. And I say was an island because what happened to Krakatoa is it exploded. There was a large volcanic eruption and that eruption is actually what caused this extremely loud sound. Um, the Krakatoa explosion registered at about 310 decibels. Um, the closest you can get to hearing that kind of noise nowadays is by standing right next to a rocket being taken off um, into outer space. So it's incredibly loud. Um, it was so loud that they could hear it all the way in Australia, which is about 2,000 miles away. That'd be like an explosion happening here in Las Vegas and then being able to hear it in uh, Alaska. So it was incredibly long traveling. Um, the sound waves, even though uh, you know they slow down as they go around the Earth, they did travel around the Earth for about five days and they surrounded the Earth about four times. So it was a really extremely loud noise. Um, not only was it a loud noise, but it also was um, extremely destructive around uh, the island. It shot smoke about 17 miles into the air. Um, it shot lava and other debris at about 1,600 uh, miles per hour in every direction. Um, and the sound itself actually did quite a bit of damage. It, uh, there was a group of sailors about 40 miles away whose eardrums were totally shattered um, just by listening to that sound. Now this happened in August 27th, 1883. So even though we don't have um, video of it or we don't have a sound recording of it necessarily, we do have it recorded and they were able to measure decibels back in that time. Um, there have been other large volcanic eruptions like Pompeii, things like that, um, but we don't have an actual recording of how loud that was. Um, so for today, we are gonna be creating our very own Krakatoa volcanic eruption. Um, you guys might have done something like this. We're just gonna be making our own very cool volcano experiment. So first things first, just get a paper plate or a flat tray like this. Make sure you are in an area that you can get kind of messy in. Um, I use this small little cup, but like a Dixie cup where you can actually cut like a paper cup down in size if you'd like. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to cover that with clay. Um, so you cover it with clay, you can cover it with Play-Doh that you don't mind getting ruined. You can even make your own mud. Um, they should all work pretty well. Clay is just easiest to mold. Um, but yes, you can use whatever you need. You're gonna cover that clay um, with some sand or some large rocks. If you have volcanic rock, igneous rock, you can use that as well. And you're gonna kind of create your own little um, volcano. So let me show you a little bit over here what I made. You can see right here I made my own little volcano. 
I added some little trees and my own little critters. I got zebra, triceratops, you know, and make whatever you'd like to put on there. Um, now, once you have it done, mine's nice and dried, but you don't need to wait until it dries. You can uh, leave it wet. Um, you're going to make your own explosion. Now, you might have worked with vinegar and baking soda before. What happens with vinegar and baking soda is they cause a chemical reaction and it explodes with carbon dioxide. But I want to make sure it's a big explosion, so I'm putting quite a bit of baking soda in. I'm going to put some vinegar in a cup. And to make my lava, I'm going to add a little bit of red food coloring. Orange would work as well. I want it to be pretty red, so not a lot. Mix that up. And I'm going to go ahead and make my own toast. Let me make sure. Ready? There you go. Quiet reaction. Keep pouring that in. There's a lot of baking soda in there. You can see all my poor little animals were knocked over. Now because it's made out of clay, you can probably use this quite a few times. So, you know, once it kind of dies down, go ahead and add a couple more scoops of baking soda. keep adding that reaction in there. So enjoy, have fun with your Krakatoa explosion.